you can beat anxiety and you can do so without medication. Well, I'm not the expert on that one, but the one I'm talking to today, Mark Neely is. So welcome, Mark. <laughs> so good thank to you, have thank you here. Thank you, thank so, you, Lexi. You're, you're so welcome. So I recently heard your story and I was so moved by it because you really spoke from the heart. So could you tell a little something about what drove you to actually quit the, the anxiety medication and e even maybe how you experienced anxiety at first and well whatever you want to share beyond that sure um i mean going back to even early childhood uh, you know i remember having anxiety i think a lot of kids probably experienced that time of where you walk into the the lunchroom or the classroom for the first time and you know who am i going to sit with but then you know that just sort of carried on through life and it just never really went away to where i felt like all the time i was always nervous um worried about um what was going to happen next worried about you know you know my people around me uh, that i cared for you know what was going to happen to them and so a lot of it is, you know, like they say that your problems are mostly what you think. It's not really the problem itself. It's how you're looking at the problem. And as much as that, I wanted that to resonate with me and to actually be reality, it wasn't reality for me. So I knew that something was wrong. So I'm 55 now. When I was about 40, 42, I guess about 42, um, you know, I went to a counselor and he gave me a book and one of the first chapter was on general, general anxiety disorder. So GAD, it, I said, and I said, well, that sounds like me. And he said, yeah, I think so. And so, you know, at the time it was just pretty much, you know, Hey, this is just going to be your baseline. You know, there's not a really a lot you can do about it. And then eventually I got with a psychiatrist who prescribed medication, uh, which I was on for about seven years. Um, and so that was Cymbalta. So I was on Cymbalta about 60 milligrams for about seven years. Now, during this time, at some point, I started reusing cannabis, which uh, I had you know, used heavily during college, high school, and then early adult life. And uh, But now it had reared its head. And so I'm using both, um, realizing that this is probably not optimal. Uh, and then I'm realizing that the anxiety is still sort of there. So... You know, as I began to delve into the Instagram world, which, you know, at some point, I don't know, three or four years ago, I realized that Instagram was not just all about taking pictures of your family vacation, that there's actually a lot to learn there, uh, that I started to realize that there's a lot of things that people are doing that I could be doing. Uh, and let's see if some of these things would actually help. <clears throat> and so... You know, I started uh, thinking, all right, I was already working out in terms of weightlifting, but it wasn't enough. So I knew that, okay, cardio exercise would help. So I started walking on a treadmill. Um, I started walking uphill on a treadmill, getting a good sweat, 20, 30 minutes, because everything else was monotonous and boring to me. I hated running. I hated, you know, riding a bike. So that really helped. And then I realized that there's a lot of natural things like cold showers, cold plunge, you know, sauna. Um, and then I was introduced, Lexi, to, you know, a more, a newer medical technology called neurofeedback. And so neurofeedback is where they're going to do a brain map and look at the, and scan your brain and they're going to show it to you in, a, in you know, in colored photos, uh, a diagram and show you where the trauma exists in your brain. Now with neurofeedback therapy, they're going to they're going to connect these little nodes um, to your brain that have wires that are going to go into, you know, a, a machine and the machine is going to read your brain waves and it's going to send uh, it's going to send new brain waves to your brain. OK, signals, new brain signals to actually create new neural pathways. So neural pathways or you could have bad neural pathways where, uh, you know, where addiction and trauma exist. And if you can create new ones, your brain's actually healing. So this was amazing to me that your brain could actually heal from trauma 
heal from addiction, heal from anxiety, these types of things. So I started doing neurofeedback therapy once to twice, once or twice a week. And I did about 20, 25 sessions that really helped. And so that was a really big, big thing for me. Um, you know, since that time, I was able to get off of the medication and wean myself off of the, um, the Cymbalta. It was very difficult, uh, you know, but I knew I, I needed to get on the other side of it because I still was ex experiencing the anxiety even when I was on it. And so I figured, you know, there's a lot of things I can do. I can stop cannabis use. I can, um, you know, have a better diet. I can, ha I can express gratitude and journal things like this. And then, you know, natural things like the cold showers and the cold plunge increase your natural dopamine by two and a half times for several hours after, after the experience. And so all of these things sort of just started lining up and I realized, you know, this is the time to get off. So just January of this year, I started to space out the Cymbalta and uh, eventually wean myself off of it over the course of about six weeks. And so since that time, I've, you know, I've implemented a lot of other things. You know, I read more, um, you know, I wasn't a big reader. Uh, so, you know, Alex Hermosi said, hey, uh, if you struggle reading, you, you like me. He said, uh, you know, you can, this is what I do. And he, he gave a little hack that he uses, which was, you know, use the, um, the audio book while you're reading along with the actual book with a highlighter. Next thing you know, Pandora's box opened for me. And, you know, I began to absorb and retain and want to read more. And so um, it's a great time to be able to read. It, it, reading is a great time to be able to slow your brain down and focus on one thing rather than your brain just sort of all over the place, right? Thinking about everything else because it's just so busy. I think for the, for those of us who struggle with anxiety, one of the hardest things is just this feeling of, of, you know, everything's going on at once, you know, you feel overwhelmed, you know, and you can get overwhelmed easily and, and they're and you either shut down or burst out, have an outburst like anger whatever it may be. And, and it just depends on the person. So for me, I realized that, you know, at an early age, I was spanked hard, you know, with a belt, you know, I'm just learning this, that it was actually younger. I mean, I remember when I was a preteen and adolescent and I remember it then my parents were very, very young. You know, I was born in 1968 and, you know, my dad's thought was, Hey, I'm making a man out of him. So, but turns out, you know, spanking a kindergartner or a first grader with a belt, maybe not the best thing because what it did, it made me a bully in the first grade. So here I am walking to first grade class and, you know, I'm, I'm picking fights and I'm cussing and, you know, I've got a 25 year old dad at home. Um, and I think it was embarrassing to him. Uh, but this is, this is what I think created some of the, the, the anger trauma. Right. And so that still was manifesting itself. I'm still processing today. You know, I'm still working through things today. Um, you know, I don't know that you ever, I mean, we're broken people, Lexi. You know, I, I kind of look at things from a Christian worldview and I feel that God is making me new. But, you know, at the, ultimately, I don't think we'll ever be made completely whole on this side of heaven. And I think that now um, it's it's a battle and there are things that we can do to, I think a lot of the big word for me is submission, you know, and submitting, releasing control um, of the things that I cannot control. There's just, there's only so many things I can control. And there's actually a piece in that, you know, there's yep, actually a I piece, see. peace and knowing, right. That um, you know, some things are just not in my control that I can let go of that and um, know that I've done all I can do. It's almost like in our relationships, right? I mean, you're only responsible for your own actions. You know, what the other person does or doesn't do, you know, is you can't control. And sometimes that's very sad. Yeah, so. I, I totally agree. You can talk to them. You can explain how you feel. Um, you can talk to them in a different manner as in with more clarity, with more details, with more feeling. But if they still don't understand and they don't want to change it, well, that's where it ends. 
I mean, mm -hmm. there's only so many times you can express what you're feeling, but I, I do believe that the most important thing is to be more specific, but some people won't get it because they've never been in that situation. If they've never been broken before, uh, they, they haven't experienced abuse, uh, you know, it's very hard for them to understand like what it's like when you're just a little kid and there's your dad and he's trying to toughen you up for the right reasons, but you're a kid and you don't understand it, what's going on. And it makes sense that you became a bully because when you are being controlled and being dominated, then at some point you want to find others to release that anger to you and to find some sort of control in your own life. So, you know, I was bullied during uh, at, at school and at some point uh, when puberty hit, I was for a quick moment, I was the tallest of everyone and I'd done jujitsu. So for, for, for a couple of months, I was sort of the bully because I finally was on the other end and it, it was just for a short period of time but that was precisely it it was taking back the control like hey now I'm in control oh that's exciting so how does that work and you want to explore it and then you know you've explored it and it's over and gone with so so um what I find there's a number of things which I find so exciting in your story um but let's start with that, that first part, the, um, the neurotherapy, because you told me um, the neurofeedback. So they, they basically put like a cap with wires on your head. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, they read out the brain and then they, they um, change it. So uh, we know their the brain is very uh, adaptive. It's called neuroplasticity. Yes. And, and, and that's a good thing. So yeah, it can, it can actually generate new neural pathways. So would you say that without the neurofeedback therapy, um, would you still have beat uh, the anxiety um, by doing all the other stuff? Because you've done a lot of a lot of things yeah and, you know the food think, the workouts I, sure yeah i think it's hard to say because i've you know it's about it's about 20 things i've done none of which are mm. um you know maybe the neurofeedback is the one that most people have not heard of but you know lifting weights cold showers cold plunge i mean everybody knows about these things now right but I mean, but actually doing them is different. Well, the neurofeedback, maybe not as commonly known, like you're saying. So I think that's where I definitely saw a difference. I saw a difference in my wife when she did it. Um, just the even after each session, which lasts about 35 minutes, you're allowed to do it. And I'll just describe it really, really quickly. But they give you two options. You can do eyes open where you're watching a screen. And I think more kids do that and watch a show. But for me, um, screens are a source of, you know, stress anyway, sometimes. I think I want to be – so I chose – I always choose option – the other option, which is, you know, um, eyes closed. It's in a dark room. Not completely dark, but mostly dark. And then there's some, you know, sort of um, – new age music is sort of just, you know, ethereal type music that's going on. And then there's some lower underlying – tones and those tones are when it's sending the actual signals into those new neural pathways and so you know you're listening to the music you might hear do 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 you know that sort of thing and so after 35 minutes you're up you feel very relaxed if anyone i tell you what i've also done but i've only done this once and i highly recommend it but i did a float now i did it for 90 minutes in a chamber um, where you're floating in about 18 inches of salt water, completely, you know, naked. It's, you know, you feel like you're suspended in space between, you know, you and God, I guess, uh, you know, you and the universe. But that after the first hour, that last 30 minutes in, in the, um, in, in the float is very similar to what I feel in the neurofeedback therapy. I mean, it's calming my brain, um, I feel relaxed when I'm done and usually I fall asleep, you know, during it. And so there's nothing wrong with that. They tell you, 
So I feel that it's a very, I mean, it's about $125 per session, but you can buy packages. You can get, sometimes your insurance will reimburse you. So, I mean, here in where I, where I live in the, in the Nashville area, I go to Tennessee Neurofeedback, but I would encourage listeners all over the world to um, the viewers to, to check out where it is. I mean, I think this originated in, in Sweden, um, the technology. So Again, not been around super long, but uh, there's nothing painful about it. There's nothing um, discomforting about it. So I, I highly recommend it, and I do feel like it helped me a lot and still oh, does. I mean, I still go. Yeah, that's so good. Yeah, it's it's about calming the brainwave down. So I, I do meditations, and uh, mm -hmm. every once in a while I'll use the – We're back here. Yes, good. There we go. So sometimes I um, I, I do weekly uh, meditational sessions with my uh, mm -hmm. when I do the group coaching, and sometimes I create personal ones, and I use binaural beats. So they use certain frequencies, which actually stimulate the brain to to change in a positive sense. So yes, calming down, uh, whether it's 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 using um, those frequencies or using floating. I, I guess, you know, the whole thing about anxiety is you're so wired up that you just want that brain to shut down for a second yeah. and, and feel relaxed again. And th those are all the things that you've been doing. And by doing repetitive mm. things, whether it's, you know, on the treadmill, you also slow your brain down. So I yeah. know you need to go in a few minutes. Okay. Um, <laughs> So my question to you is, what's the one thing you would like to say now to the viewers? Yeah, I mean, if you're out there and you're you're medicating with whether it be medication or and or like me, you had the you had the prescription drugs and then you're let's just call it what it is of smoking weed. I mean, and eating the gummies, you got the pen going, you got the flower, whatever it is. Um and you're and you're and you're wondering is is there a way out of this? Is there a way to get to the other side where um, I can leave all this behind? Uh, I'm I'm here to tell you you, you can, and um, it's not easy, but you're worth it. I mean, I, I had to say, look, <clears throat> this is me. I get one life, and Lexi, I'll tell you, there's something about you know reaching a certain age where you realize that you know what do I have? 20, 25, 30 years left. If I'm, you know, by the grace of God, he lets me live that long. I mean, um, and so what, what, is, what do I want those years to look like? And do I want them to look like what I'm doing right now? You know, and, you know, so if that's where you're at and you want to change that to where you're, you want it to look differently then you know, I'm here to help. I'm always, I'm an open book. Um, this is my mission, you know, to help people overcome stress, anxiety, depression, addiction in ways that are out there already that are very healthy, that are natural. Uh, now, listen, if, if you need a the therapist, if you need, if you're feeling like you want to take your own life, sometimes medication, it needs to be a bridge to get you maybe to that next moment. But I have to say, I mean, for me, I would probably never go back to a psychoactive drug. No, even, you know, I, I would figure out some other ways to, um, you know, to 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 deal with the trauma. I mean, who knows? Like, you know, my wife could die before me. That would be traumatic. I mean, how would I deal with that? I would like to think that what I've learned now, um, you know, with a death in the family or something like that, that I would be able to implement the things, double down on the things I'm doing now, making sure uh, that I'm doing those things and not resort to, you know, prescription drugs, which are really just, look, our brains are, are, are delicate things. And, um, you know, there, you need to listen to yourself, you need to listen to your body. And I'm a big proponent of talking to, you know, a, 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 um, 
you know, a doctor that's maybe a non-traditional doctor, you know, about these things, you know, so a functional medicine, um, holistic medicine, those, those types of people. I just see so many people now that I've encountered that have never been on antibiotics or their kids have never been on antibiotics, you know, and they're, you know, they're, they don't get sick. And I used to think, just really write that stuff off. Like, that's just ridiculous. You know, PBGB, whatever, you know, which when you're in a room full of a hundred people and, you know, they're, they've got story after story after story. I mean, and you, you go through this for several months or a couple of years, you start to realize, man, this is, uh, there's something to this, obviously. I mean, these people are not just making it up. It's kind of hard to make up that much stuff. So that's where I just started to get like, pay more attention to what I eat when I go to sleep, you know, what is my sleep quality like and all those things. So I, there's a lot of things. I mean, like if you snore, go get a sleep study done. I mean, getting a CPAP machine was one of the best things I ever did. I mean, I was waking up 26 times an hour. Just think about that. Yeah, I mean, if your body here. is waking up 26 times an hour, you, you're not, not really getting into any deep REM sleep and that's just adding to your anxiety the next day. So Listen, you can follow me, uh, Mark Neely Home on Instagram, uh, same on on uh, TikTok and uh, YouTube is what I was trying to say. YouTube, so many platforms, it's hard to keep up with them all. But Mark <laughs> Neely Home, Mark Neely home. Uh, and uh, yeah, and you can drop a message there to me, make a comment. But, you know, I'm a mortgage banker, mortgage broker by trade. I'm a top 1% mortgage broker for the last several years couple decades several years uh but my mission is to help people be you know anxiety depression and, and addiction and i'm on a mission to do that so always here for you and um thanks for having me on i really appreciate you well thank you so much for having been here hopefully we can continue this at, at another time uh, for sure. now i think your message is very helpful you can be anxiety you can do it on your own uh, of course the neurofeedback therapy really helps uh, but yes there are a number of things you can do and we'll talk about that on the uh, on a later day but for now thank you so much Absolutely. thank you for being so candid and open. thank you lexi and we'll talk soon again thank you thank lexi. you mark <laughs> thanks for having me okay bye-bye